Oh, hello, great readers. I'm Bill Chen. I'm Nima Kung. I'm Van Chan. In this class, I'll read to all of you. Clef. For a congratulatory sec, to of a tale of two cities, book the second golden thread. Ass. Ah. A tale of two cities, book the second golden thread. Charles Dickens. Clap. For a congratulatory sec, too. I have no business, said Mr. Carton. It is a pity you have not. I think so. If you had pursued Mr. Or you. Lord love you. Oh, I shouldn't, said Mr. Carton. Well. So, cried Mr. Or you. Thoroughly heated by his indifference. Business is a very good thing. And a very respectable thing. And then. So. If business imposes its restraints and its silences and impediments. Mr. Tarnay as a young gentleman of generosity knows how to make allowance for that circumstance. Mr. Tarnay. Good night. God bless you. Thor. Perhaps a little angry with himself. As well as with the barrister. Mr. Worry bustled into the chair. And was carried off to Tilson's. Carton. Who smelt of poor wine. And did not appear to be quite sober. Laughed then. And turned to Darnay. This is a strange chance that throws you and me together. This must be a strange night to you. I hardly see me yet, returned Charles Darnay. I don't wonder at it. It's not so long since you were pretty far advanced on your way to another. Then why the devil don't you dine? I dined. Myself. While those numbskulls were deliberating which world you should bone to advise. Or some other. Drawing his arm through his own. He took him down Lord Gayhill to Flea Street. And so. Up a covered way. Into a tavern. Ere. They were shown into a little room. Wine. Walcart and sat opposite to him at the same table. With his separate bottle of port before him. And his flea half in slant manner upon him. Do you feel that that you belong to this terrestrial scheme again, Mister? I am frightfully confused regarding time and place. He said it bitterly, and filled up his glass again, which was a large one. As to me, the greatest desire I have. Is to forget that I belong to it. It is no good in it for me except wine like this, nor I for it. So we are not much alike in that particular. Indeed, I begin to think we are not much alike in any particular. Confused by the emotion of the day, and feeling his being there with this double of course department, to be like a dream. Charles Darnay was at a loss how to answer. Finally, and said not at all. Now your dinner is done, Cart and presently said. Why don't you call a health, Mister? Darnay. What health? Why? It's on the tip of your tongue. It ought to be. It must be, Miss Manette. Miss Manette. The king is companion fell in the face while he drank the toast. Carton flung his glass over his shoulder against the wall. 
where I shiver to pieces. Then, and the bell, and ordered in another. That's a fair young lady to hand a goat in the dark. Bistu. Tharne, he said, filling his new goblet. A slight frown and a lack on a case with answer. That's a fair young lady to be pitied by and wept for by. How does it feel? Is it worth being tried for one's life? To be the object of such sympathy and compassion. Bistu. Again Darnay had said not a word. She was mightily pleased to have your message. When I gave it her. Not that she showed she was pleased. The illusion served as a timely reminder to Darnay that this disagreeable companion had. Of his own free will. Assisted him in the straight of the day. He turned the dialogue to that point and thanked him for it. I neither want any thanks, nor merit any was the careless rejoinder. It was nothing to do, in the first place, and I don't know why I did it. In the second, Mr. Thane, Willenly, really, Bistu. Carsing returned the other. Oddly disconcerted. You have acted as if you do. I don't think I do, said Carton. Nevertheless, pursued Darnay. Rising to ring the bell. There is nothing in that. I hoped. To prevent my calling the reconing. Carton returning. Nothing in life. Darnay ran. Do you call the whole reconing? said Carton. On his answering in the affirmative. Then bring me another pint of this same wine. Tomorrow. The bill being paid. Charles Darnay rose and wished him good night. Without returning the wish. Carton rose too with something of a threat of defiance in his manner, and said, A last word. Wiste. Darnail. I think you have been drinking. Wiste. Think. Since I must say so, then you shall likewise know why. I am a disappointed judge. Sir, I care for no man on earth. Much to be regretted. Maybe so. Wister. Thane. Maybe not. Don't let your sober face elate you. However, you don't know what it may come to. When he was left alone, this strange being took up a candle, went to a glass that hung against the wall, and surveyed himself minutely in it. Do you particularly like the man he muttered at his own image? Why should you particularly like a man who resembles you? There is nothing in you to like. You know that. Ah. Confined you. What a change you have made in yourself. A good reason for taking to a man. That he shows you what you have fallen away from. And what you might have been. Change places with him. And would you have been looked at by those blue eyes as he was. And commiserated by that agitated face as he was. Come on. And have it out in plain words. He resorted to his pint of wine for consolation. Drank it all in a few minutes. And fell asleep on his arms. With his hair struggling over the table. And a long winding sheet in the candle dripping down upon him. 
to be continued.